Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and let's start this thing off. I've got storms in the area, so by the way, if, if uh, there's like thunderstorms in my area of the world right now, and so they could involve tornadoes. So if you hear a tornado siren go off, that means that the Digital Asset Investor has to go hide in the bathroom, and I have to get my son, and we got to go get in the bathroom. So. Um, that's what'll be going on and maybe i'll even maybe i'll do the first show and let and keep it recording maybe i'll do the first show ever where you hear me try to survive a tornado um so so if you hear that um that's what's going on and i'll i'll talk you through it but in the meantime let's check in with the official cool guy who is up there i guess in new york or new jersey and he does not have to worry to worry about tornadoes in that part of the world Crypto means business. He's in business attire today, so crypto means business, and the official cool guy of the Digital Asset Investor channel means business. Now check this out, because I have one simple question for you, for you today. My question is, why? Why would Elon Musk launch crypto trading? He announced the partnership with eToro. Why would he announce crypto trading right in on Twitter, right in the very middle of Operation Choke Point 2.0, the, the SEC crypto crackdown? Why would he do that? And I'm not saying I know the answer. I'm saying why would he do that? There's got to be a reason and a good one. Check this out. Twitter users will soon be able to buy crypto through the app. With 450 million users, Twitter could become the largest crypto brokerage in partnership with eToro. For reference, Binance has 90 million users. This also means that Twitter accounts will have wallets and users can send each other payments. One negative I can think of is that you'd have to KYC your social media account. Still. This is very bullish for crypto as other social media platforms will likely follow suit. Folks, imagine a world. You know what I'll do here? Uh, I'll do it at the end of this if I still have time. Okay. But I, I, I want, there, there, was a, there was a Kendra Hill post a long time ago. I'll just kind of summarize. There was a Kendra Hill post a long time ago. And she basically said, the cross-border thing is just a testing ground for Ripple, and said, "Why would you?" And said, "Why would you need with digital currencies? Why would you need that middleman, the bank? Why would you even need that when you can go wallet to wallet?" And let me tell you what, folks, with the banks collapsing and all this collapsing all around us, you have to wonder if we are entering an app-to-app, wallet-to-wallet world where major social media accounts are all you need. Everything apps, super apps is all you need. Um, still, this is very bullish for crypto as other social media platforms will, will likely follow suit. Here's another thing that doesn't make any sense. Listen, look at this tweet. February 23rd, 2023. New York Department of Financial Services grants bit license to eToro permitting it to offer crypto, including Ethereum, to New York residents. March 9th, New York Attorney General filed suit against KuCoin, seeking a court determination that ETH is an unregistered security under New York law. And then on April 13th, Twitter announces partnership with eToro to offer crypto trading, including ETH, to Twitter users, including New York residents. Get your popcorn ready. I think you got to get your popcorn ready. I'm going to skip ahead and then I'm going to come back. I think you need to get your popcorn ready for several reasons. Two of which are these two things I'm about to show you. Look at this. Diane Feinstein has been absent from, now she's a Democrat and I'm going to show you a Republican too. Don't worry. It's in about parties. 
This is about corruption. Dianne Feinstein has been absent from Congress and asked to resign. Feinstein, 89 years old, has some of the most unusual trades in Congress over her 30-year career. In that time, and she's got the same problem Nancy Pelosi has, in that time her net worth skyrocketed to over $200 million. Let's look at some of her unusual trades. And then they go through, let's just take the first. Feinstein reportedly, reportedly attended COVID hearings by CDC in early June 2020. Afterwards, her husband sold between 1.5 and 6 million in stock in, in stock allergene therapeutics, amongst others. The stock market collapsed shortly afterwards. Feinstein was cleared by the DOJ. Yeah. Then you got this one, Mitch McConnell. Now, look, folks. If there's ever been someone who I've, I've always thought is dirty as the, as the day is long, it's that man right there. And I'll never forget it like it was yesterday, back during the whole election debacle with Trump and Biden. This guy showed up on the floor of Congress, and I'll never forget it. His hands looked like someone had strapped his hands to a table and beat them both with a hammer. And he had a bruise on his face. And I remember some creepy guy sitting behind him in Congress that was making all these weird hand signs. I'll never forget it. There is something creepy in this country and in this world afoot. And I think that you are beginning to see something right here. I don't know what we're watching, but it is creepy. Okay, now let's go back. Hey, E. Toro. Why did you delist XRP if you have a securities license? Here, I showed you this morning their securities license. And then here's the uh, article from their blog on December 31st, 2020, when they suspended XRP trading because of the SEC um, lawsuit. So I'm, I'm wondering, because e, uh, eToro US, I guess, is going to be working with Twitter. So I'm wondering if they've gotten their securities license since um, since the Ripple lawsuit dropped, the SEC lawsuit against Ripple dropped. Here's the tweet uh, from December 31st, 2020, when they suspended XRP trading. So I would say eToro, e I don't know if they have or have not, but I would say relist XRP if you have not. Why not? This is something else interesting I found in doing a little bit of research today. This is a tweet from February 1, 2019. Dark Horse. We still don't know if Bitcoin can ever be surpassed, but XRP by Ripple Labs just might have a chance to, if so. Tell us, who is your dark horse candidate for, for football's MVP this year? So they're calling XRP the dark horse. I think XRP is definitely the dark horse, and they're going to they're gonna put a wallop on Bitcoin. Because remember... Once another digital asset besides Bitcoin, a, a real digital asset that works besides Bitcoin and Ethereum has the clarity that they've been given the free pass that they've had for the last three, year, three or four years. Once that's done, the question is why own Bitcoin or Ethereum? Well, really Bitcoin, but why Ethereum's a little different. But why own Bitcoin if you can have XRP and it's got everything Bitcoin's got? You, it's got a limited amount. But it's faster, cheaper, more scalable. Doesn't use all the mining, the energy, and all that. Now, check this out, because when I was looking into eToro this morning, I ran across a wallet. I don't even know if they still have this wallet. Maybe they do. But they called it eToro X. Watch this. <laughs> Buying and selling of an ever-growing list of crypto assets. We increment a stable coin as a cryptocurrency that is pegged to a financial asset like gold, oil, U.S. dollar. Transactions are conducted in the bleak of an eye. There you go. Then we got this. Next week, EU is set to become the first major jurisdiction in the world to agree 
A far-reaching crypto regulatory framework. Officials in the industry are already taking it up, talking it up. All right. Then we got this. This is a Marcus Treacher. He used to be at Ripple. Um, I think he was formerly at Swift. Watch this. Have figured out technology in a way that really fits the problem of cross border payment stability very, very well. So, for the cross border payment challenge, we created an open internet model. We called the idea Interledger. So, Interledger, like the internet, supports our Ripple technology globally. And that model does not require a single universal common blockchain, it requires a very open blockchain interconnectivity. And that means that the volume is theoretically infinite. In fact, the internet never runs out of um, capacity. Elements do, but the internet still works because it's inherently decentralized. So Ripple is the same. So we have a decentralized model, which is infinitely scalable. Supporting that, we have our liquidity proposition, which uses XRP, and that's a classic blockchain. But XRP was designed from the outset for transacting. So unlike the likes of Bitcoin, which is like very slow and slows down as you, as you continue to build on volume, the XRP model is very, very, very high speed and very high capacity. So the liquidity part is very adequately served by the XRP model. The wider network we're creating, where if you're really going to create something of value for 7 billion people in the world of 9 billion by 2050, you've got to have a very open internet type model. And that's what you have with our X current Ripple Net models. Built for 7 billion people, folks. And then we've got this bizarre story. Remember the remember the guy um, out in San Francisco that was apparently murdered, stabbed. He was a crypto guy that that created the uh, Cash App. Bob Lee created it, and he was stabbed to death. Well, now they're saying that a suspect is arrested in the murder, and the guy was another executive that went. I think he went to college with this guy, Nima Momini. So let's see if it says there's a thread now. Let's see what it says. Um, found, okay. So anyway, crypto murder. I love this graphic because this tells the tale of ever since I got into this, this is how I have felt. Don't forget the sleeping giant XRP. XRP, the giant down here and his finger, Litecoin, Ethereum, BNB, BTC, ADA. That is a killer illustration of what I feel like has gone on for all this time. The only thing they did not include there, let's see, they got Litecoin. I guess they pretty much got them. Um, and then we're back to that. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family that XRP is and has always been the